morning. Um, yeah, maybe for, the, for you fans out there, maybe I should have entitled this Working on a Dream or something like that, but only a few people here will get that. And if the next question is, yes, I'm from Jersey. It, originally exit four, I'm now at exit 15. Uh, just by a quick show of hands, before today, how many of you have heard of Ada Health? I'm expecting very few, okay. And likewise, how many of you have actually downloaded our app? Okay. Well, you may be surprised to know that in less than three years, we've become the number one medical app in the world. We're actually number one in over 130 countries, and I'll show you why in a few seconds. To start with, let's think about the world we live in. As we know, everyone goes online for medical information. And a lot of those large health websites that we're all familiar with have done a terrific job of developing content, optimizing it for search engines, and monetizing it. Well, there's another trend happening, and that's that everyone's going to Google, expecting it to know everything, and Googling their symptoms. So what's happening are people are Googling their symptoms and often ending up on content sites that are designed really to help people live with a chronic condition, not potentially diagnose it. And it's creating this era of what I call the cyberchondriac. The person that walks into the doctor's office already having self-diagnosed themselves and obviously frustrating the doctor. We're also living in a world where people just expecting to be per everything to be personalized. It's what I call mass personalization. You may remember, I think it was only like 10 years ago, a commercial that showed someone pulling up to a roadside inn in the middle of the desert and the innkeeper touts that he has every movie, every book ever recorded available for viewing at any single time. We kind of laughed at that. And here we are in less than 10 years later, and we have it. We can now access any content that's been produced anywhere. Why can't we do that for healthcare? Why don't we have access from our pocket to all of the world's medical information and be able to apply it to us in a personalized way that takes into account our own histories and risk factors? And then lastly, we're living in a world where people are now just expecting everything to be on demand. We've watched banking, real estate, travel, hospitality industries get completely disintermediated because they deliver this mass personalization wherever people need it on demand. And the good news is we're starting to see it more and more in healthcare. A lot of the things we're talking about today, telehealth and trackers are really putting things into people's hands. In fact, a recent survey has said that over 75% of people are now using some form of technology to help them better manage their health. So who's Ada? I'll tell you a little bit about Ada as you're reading the screen, but we were actually founded about nine years ago. People think of us as a startup, but we were founded nine years ago in Berlin, Germany, where we're still headquartered. And over the last nine years, we've had a team of 150 people, including 40 to 50 full-time medical doctors and a team of engineers, scientists, and geneticists building what we believe is the world's most advanced and comprehensive medical knowledge base and the most advanced probabilistic reasoning engine. I don't say that lightly. Those 40 to 50 doctors have spent those last nine years coding in everything from every medical textbook they ever encountered, case studies, and published research. Originally, we set out with this uh, platform as a clinical decision support tool. However, we saw a couple trends emerging a couple years ago that really forced us to pivot more towards consumers. In particular, as I mentioned, we see 80% of people going online for health information. We see more than one out of every 20 Google searches symptom related. We're seeing millions of patients misdiagnosed, and a, a large uh, portion of those are due to taking that wrong first step on our care journey. As many as 38%, as much as 38% of misdiagnosis occur just because people started out on that wrong uh, first foot. The amount of credible medical information is now um, doubling worldwide every 60 to 75 days, making it impossible for any one human being, let alone doctor, to keep up. And then lastly, the stats that really motivated us was we saw a world where four billion people, half the population, don't have access to healthcare. But a similar number, about four billion people, have a smartphone. So we started asking ourselves, how can we leverage the fact that everyone has a smartphone to deliver at least a frontline access to healthcare? And with that, I'll just show you a 30-second demo of how we're doing it. Sound? So what you just saw is we developed uh, a little under three years ago. We launched in iOS December of 16, Android a couple months later. We built a Q&A style, very empathetic, friendly chatbot on top of our medical knowledge base and reasoning engine to make it accessible to all. 
And in those three years, we've just had phenomenal results. We've been downloaded by over 8 million people. Every one of them has to register to use our product. We've completed, as of this week, over 15 million assessments. We've become the number one medical app in over 130 countries. We are the only medical app that's been downloaded over 3 million times with over 100,000 ratings, um, and the ratings over 4.7 in the last two years by far. And what we're now doing is working with health systems, payers, government organizations, and others around the world to say, how do we leverage this platform and embed it into their systems for the good of the overall uh, healthcare ecosystem? Advancing? Whoops. There we go. Our first partnership, which we announced uh, back in April, is with Sutter Health here in Northern California. We are now the new digital front door for all of Sutter's patient access points. If you go to their homepage, right in the middle, you'll see uh, a web-based version of Ada. If you go to their patient portal in my chart on the main menu, you'll see uh, access to Ada. And throughout their website, wherever you're going to find a doctor, find a care facility, you'll, you'll, you'll see uh, uh, a version of our, our service, which then geolocates the patient and literally directs them to the most uh, uh, relevant, closest point of care. Originally, when this launched, Sutter's main objective was twofold. Provide 24-7 access to triage, and secondly, to clarify what they call same-day access points. A lot of confusion between emergency rooms, urgent care centers, and low-acuity walk-in centers. The results have floored both them and us. In the five months we've launched since the end of April, we've completed over 19,000 assessments, and most telling, is that two-thirds of those assessments are being done in off hours, between 6 p.m. and 9 a.m., and half of them are being directed to non-emergency care. So if you just think about the implications for healthcare here, that's potentially thousands of people that without any other uh, 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 direction may have gone to an emergency room or urgent care center in the middle of the evening, off hours, and um, instead were redirected to a primary care visit, a telehealth session, or some other more appropriate form of care. Just do the quick math. If you figure that each one of those emergency room visits, on average, is at least ten to fifteen thousand dollars, there's tremendous potential here to really help Sutter move to value-based care. What's next? We're making the assessment report available um, uh, to the clinician themselves to help in their diagnosis. It was the number one requested feature. We received 400 user comments in the first two weeks asking it. We launched it two weeks ago, and 15% of users are now downloading their assessment. Um, we're also now using it as a front end for telehealth to increase the utilization at Sutter's telehealth platform so that they can drive patients directly from this into telehealth sessions. But more importantly, let's take a step back and say what can these types of solutions do for the overall system as we move towards value-based care and ultimately try to find better outcomes. First and foremost, we see the potential to create a connected ecosystem where today when we all go online and Google our symptoms, we kind of do that in private. We don't really share that with the doctor. What we see is these assessment reports being shared with the doctor. We're actually developing waiting room applications so that your assessment gets fed into the waiting room before you get to the office, gets fed into the doctor's systems, and they therefore have the benefit of our vast knowledge base along with the recommendations of differential diagnosis and other things that they should be considering. We see this ecosystem as being a huge potential for AI. We also see a potential for earlier detection of rare diseases and other outbreaks. We did a study over the last year with several doctors. It just got published about two months ago in Orphanet, where we took over 100 rare disease cases. And if you're not aware of this, there are over 7,500 rare diseases in the world. They don't often get diagnosed because they're not part of a doctor's sphere of knowledge or experience. So what we're doing is we're making uh, the world more aware of these diseases. Well, in this particular study, we took 100 retrospective cases each case took an average of over seven years to diagnose and seven medical professionals. And what we did was we put them through ADA. We had an 88% accuracy rate and found that there's tremendous potential for earlier detection and diagnosis of these diseases. We also, interestingly enough, saw the measles outbreak appear March 25th, a full month before the World Health Organization and CDC put out alerts. And we're now working with both those organizations to say how can this data be used for earlier detection and alerting of these types of outbreaks. Overall, it's a new category for personalized health. It's finally bringing together this concept of our, our trackers, our wearables, our connected health devices into a vast knowledge base of all the medical information to deliver us personalized recommendations. And then as we go forward, we see ourselves more and more getting involved in managing people's overall health. 
tracking their medications, their symptoms, so that we can more proactively let them know when they need to seek health care instead of just reactively when they need to go see a doctor. With that, I thank you very much for your time.